Do you want to improve your pickleball game way quicker? Daily rec games are not the most efficient way to go about it. So today I'm going to show you a better way. Let's go. So when I'm trying to improve, I'm always breaking down pickleball into three main categories. You got shot selection, which is basically which shot should I play in any given scenario? You got positioning, which is where should I be on the court in any given scenario? And you got execution, which is I know what shot I want to hit. Can I actually make it happen? Can I produce that shot when I need it? The first two are great to practice in game situation. Shot selection and positioning, you really need a gameplay scenario, so rec play tournaments to be able to work on those things because they're live ball situations. However, the third one, our execution, getting our actual shots crisper, more efficient rec play is probably the worst place to do it. So I'm gonna show you today how we can be super efficient with getting all of your shots that you use in your pickleball game leveled up. Let me walk you through a couple quick numbers here just to kind of validate my point. In your average rec game, depending on the level, each person on the court is gonna touch the ball roughly 60 to 80 times, and that might be on the high end, but we'll say 60 to 80, okay? So you get 60 to 80 touches in one game, and your average game is probably 15 minutes long. Okay, now if I'm practicing against the wall, whether it be dinks, drives, volleys, I'm gonna get probably around 40 to 60 touches in one minute. These are all estimations, but you can see that for execution purposes, if I'm practicing just on the wall, it's gonna be a lot more efficient because I'm gonna get 10 times the amount of touches on any specific shot than I would if I'm just relying on kind of rec play to improve my shots. I wanna give you my 30 minute wall drill routine, which I think if you did this two, three times a week, you know, that's an hour, hour and a half a week, you're gonna see the execution and accuracy of your shots really, really amp up pretty quickly. Pretty much any wall will work. If you have a wall in your garage, if you have a backstop wall at a tennis court, a concrete wall on the side of a building, I would say a concrete wall is the best because it kind of gives the best rebound and the most kind of accurate bounce off. Once I find that, then I'm gonna get some stickers or a little piece of tape or something. So when I get to my wall, I can create targets or I can even create the net height if it's not already there. And now we're ready to roll. We're gonna start with dinking, just like we do in any usual warm up. It's kind of the slowest, easiest way to ease into things. So we're gonna go three minutes on the forehand side only. And depending on level, you can make this as simple or as complex if, as you want. If you're kind of more of an entry level, you can just get your target up there and just keep it real simple trying to put the ball as close to that target as possible. If you're working on different things or a little higher level, you can mess with spins. You can do specific ones where you maybe try to go above the target then below the target to replicate lift dinks and push dinks. You can really kind of be creative trying to do some different things with these shots. We're gonna do three minutes on the forehand, then we're gonna switch over and do three minutes on the backhand side as well. In three minutes, you should be getting probably 200 to 300 touches on each side with your dink, which is gonna be more than you'd get an entire three hour rec play session. Next, we're just gonna go into alternating or mixing up the dinks. So forehand, backhand, doesn't necessarily have to follow that pattern, but I want you to start to mix it up. Um, what you can also do is as you dink kind of wider across the wall, you're gonna have to move more. So now we're gonna be introducing more footwork, kind of replicate your footwork as you would in a match, moving left, moving right, stepping back, stepping forward if you have to. When we start to alternate like this, we should be starting to get a little more active with the feet. Next up, we have volleys. And this is one of my favorite things because we can get so many hits in a short amount of time. It's just great practice. We're gonna do two minutes on the forehand side first, then we're gonna do two minutes on the backhand side. One word I like to think of when I'm volleying is compact. So I'm trying to keep my elbow in, I'm trying to keep everything in front of me, and nice and compact. 
I don't want a lot of limbs flying around and a lot of kind of extension away from the body because that just makes it slower and harder to recover. So we're gonna get everything nice and tight and we're just gonna try to get a bunch of controlled hits on each side for two minutes. So after that, then we're gonna move into our alternating volleys. So again, this is where we're just mixing up forehands and backhands. It doesn't have necessarily have to alternate back and forth, but we're just gonna kind of move the ball around so we've gotta hit a little bit of everything. One thing to keep in mind is when we're working on volleys, you have the technique of your volley, and then the other part of it is the reaction. So when the ball's coming, how quickly we can read it and react to it. So understand that when you're working on a wall, you're not gonna be able to work on your reaction time because naturally your, your brain is going to know which direction the ball is heading into the wall and automatically know which way it's gonna come off, okay? So you're always gonna know where that next ball is going so try really hard after you hit to come back to ready position and not react to that next ball until it's coming back to you. It's kind of easy when you do these wall drills to just be waiting for the next one and just because you know where the ball is going to end up. So it does take a little bit of discipline to work on these volleys and keep them fairly realistic. So next we've got a bit of a tougher one, but I want you to give it a try because it's great practice. I call it speed up counter reset. So what it's gonna do is just gonna start with some neutral dinking, can be forehand or backhand. You're gonna pick one ball in that dink to speed up off the bounce. So we're gonna snap that wrist, get the ball moving quickly into the wall. It's gonna come back quick. Off, off of that speed up, I'm gonna counter the next ball or volley the next ball hard back into the wall. And then off of that next one, I'm gonna try to reset it slow again. Okay, so this actually replicates a pretty common pattern in pickleball. If one person speeds it up, the other person has to be ready to counter. And then if it comes back, I'm gonna, probably gonna try to reset it and slow it back down again if that speed up didn't work. This is a great way to work on switching tempos. You're going from slow to fast, to countering fast again, to slowing it back down. And then you're gonna be back in that dink and you restart the whole process. So that pretty much wraps up our kitchen line stuff. So now we're gonna move back. You can estimate a rough distance as if you were standing on the baseline from the wall. We're just gonna work our ground strokes. Two minutes on the forehand, two minutes on the backhand. We're just working that ground stroke drive, trying to keep it nice and low over that net, trying to get a little top spin on the ball if you can, trying to dial in some control and accuracy on this shot. Now that we got a bunch of ground stroke reps, we're gonna start to introduce the serve, which is basically just a forehand ground stroke anyway. So this should be already kind of warmed up. So we're gonna do our normal serve, could be out of the hand, could be drop. We're gonna serve it at the wall, as that ball rebounds back, you're gonna hit a return. So one key thing with a return is try to move through the ball. So try to move forward through this shot. So this is just a two shot sequence. You hit a serve into the wall, ball comes back, you move forward as you're kind of transitioning towards that wall, hitting a return. After that, you just grab the ball, go back and start it over again. So it's two minutes of that serve and return. Next, I'm gonna to try to, again, kind of replicate a, a common pattern, which is we're gonna use that serve again to start it off. And then when that ball comes back, we're gonna hit our third shot drop. But with this one, we're going much slower, we're going much higher, and we're trying to get this ball to hit the wall, again, just about maybe a, a little less than a foot above where you put your net line. Again, this is just a two ball sequence, so serve, hit your third shot drop, whether it's a forehand or backhand, and then grab the ball, go back, restart, and do it again. All right, so we've been through all of our shots now. We've gotten tons of touches on all the different shots. So for the last couple minutes, what I like to do is just kind of play around, have a bit of a, you know, a free session where I try to put everything together. So most of the time I'll start at the baseline. I'll start it with a serve. I may return and come in right away. I may hang back and, and drive a couple ground strokes first. Maybe then I'll drop one, 
transition in. Once you get to that line, then, then hit a couple dinks, maybe pick one to speed up, hit a couple volleys. At some point you're probably gonna miss and then you just grab the ball and start it all over again. The main goal here is feeling the transition from shot to shot. As you transition closer to the wall, as you transition from slower shots to faster shots or faster to slower, trying to maintain control through all of it. That's it, that's your 30 minutes. You probably got well over a thousand touches on the ball in this 30 minutes, which is, it's great. If you can do that, like I said, a couple times a week, you're gonna see your level go up a lot quicker. I know this was a lot of information. I know you probably didn't remember it all. So as usual, I've got my little screenshot cheat sheet here for you. So make sure you screenshot this. So when you head out to the court, you've got it saved in your phone. You can check it out and do it just like we talked about. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.